My name is Emma Simone and I'm the student minister in McAdam, Upper Mills and Boca Beck. I'm here today to share some prayers, scripture and a short message with you. Let us pray. Sovereign of creation, all that we have comes from you. Physically distant, we gather in your presence, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. People from every tribe and nation, every kindred and tongue to lift our voices in praise, to be transformed into your saints, to be sent out to gather others, to share in the eternal banquet. Hear the praise we offer, work in us and through us. You alone are holy. You alone are the most high. You alone are worthy of our praise. Glory to you, O God, and to the Lamb, our shepherd, and to the spirit that unites us all today and evermore. Amen. Reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 2. You remember our labor and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how pure, upright, and blameless our conduct was toward you believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. A poem. Let's go our old way by the stream and kick the leaves as we always did to make the rhythm of breaking ways. This day draws no breath, shows no color anywhere except for the leaves in their death, brilliant as never before. Yellow a brimstone butterfly, brown of oak egg or moth, you'd say, and I'd be wondering why a summer never seems lost. If two have been together witnessing the variousness of light and the same two in lusterless November enter the year's night, the slow worm stream how still above that spider's unguarded door. Look, dull pearls, time's full, brimming can hold no more. Next moment, we well know, my darling, you and I, what the small day cannot hold must spill into eternity. So perhaps we should move cat soft meanwhile and leave everything unsaid until no shadow of risk can be left of disturbing the scathless dead. Ah, but you were always leaf light and you so seldom talk as we go. But there at my side through the bright leaves you walk and yet touch my hand that I may be quite without fear for it seems as if a mist descends and the leaves where you walk do not stir. This poem was written by Francis Bellerby, an English poet, and is entitled All Souls Day, which is celebrated traditionally on November the 2nd. All Saints Day, which is November the 1st, traditionally was a celebration of the saints, and then All Souls Day was a celebration of the ordinary people. In Mexico, All Souls Day was combined with the more ancient Aztec practices and morphed into the Day of the Dead. Those celebrations and traditions have spread across many Spanish-speaking countries. These are the days when we commune with those who have gone on before us. For Aztecs, death was simply part of life and so was to be celebrated. They had an understanding that life continued after death, that when they met Spanish conquistadors meshed well with the understanding of Jesus having a resurrected life that is available to all. The tradition includes visiting the grave sites of relatives who are gone and cleaning up and decorating the graves, creating flower laden paths to lead them home from the cemetery, leaving and eating the foods and the treats that they liked during their lives, family picnics and gatherings in the graveyards so people can celebrate with their departed loved ones. There's an idea that on these days, the borders between the life of the living and the dead are so thin that we can almost be amongst one another again. 
And of course, there's the music, the colors, the parades. We sometimes refer to All Saints Day as Little Easter, a time when we celebrate that death is not the end and that our loved ones live on. I'm preparing for my ordination interview this week, which I'm happy to report that I did pass, which means that I should be ordained this upcoming spring, subject to our new normal. I was called back to all the people who have been part of my journey in faith who, won't, who I won't be able to call on the phone to tell. I can remember my grandfather Bobby would often make offhanded comments such as, my friend JC can walk on water, which was probably my earliest biblical education, though I wasn't too sure how JC was at the time, but he sounded really cool. To all those church people, I think of Gwyneth, who was a Sunday school teacher of mine for only a few months, but whose sense of spiritual as being everywhere and whose quiet embodied gentleness always brought me in. I think of Lori, who often sang with me, whose laugh was big, and who also was so patient with me when I was first learning my part. I think of Millard, who in the last weeks of his life served me coffee while I was in a wheelchair with a broken ankle. He just hosted me and gave generously to me the way that he always had throughout his life. I think of Borden who sat with me while my mom counted up the collection after church. Marjorie who watched me when I had the chicken pox but my mom needed to work who shared her love of elephants with me. I think of Odessa who always bought whatever I was selling for school and told me each time how to spell Odessa out on the order form. To Harry, who is my biggest critic, but also taught me how to set a table properly. I think of Ray, who adjourned every church council meeting I attended. I think of Ewart, who always showed up to church late, but with a lot of joy, and was always ready to swap pumpkins for pies. I think of Catherine, my dear friend, who went hiking and camping and tubing and so much more with me when we were both guides and pathfinders. I think of Asher, another peer and sister in guiding, who taught me so much about being yourself no matter what anyone else thinks or says, and the value of being your authentic self. I think of Ron and his willingness and patience to always help me out with my French homework. Elsie and the way she used to call me in from to the porch to have conversations about what's going on in the neighborhood. For Francis, who led me into the choir loft and helped me keep my hymns straight as a young chorister. To Sally, who made the best beans and was generous in sharing them. To Dar, my childhood babysitter, but so much more, my teacher and my second mother. This woman whose love and care for me made me feel extraordinary and taught me such important values of respect and responsibility. I think of Jerry, who entrusted my brother and I to watch his dog when we were just small children and who was slowly entrusting me more recently with all of his favorite theological books. I think of Heather, or Aunt Heather as I sometimes called her, who was always smiling and always willing to listen to the latest goings on in my life, who cared genuinely for the church and had such a tremendous faith that comforted her through years of fighting cancer, who was such an amazing mom. And I think of my Aunt Victoria, who had her own struggles with cancer, but in life loved her son, my cousins, more than anything, and always remembered that I loved purple and always gave me these huge hugs and whose laugh and joy I can still hear in the back of my mind. I think of all of these people and all those people who I didn't even get a chance to mention. And while I grieve that I cannot call them and tell them about how I'm going to be ordained in May, somehow, I also know that all the pieces of my life that they loved and cared for continue to be a part of this journey and that I pass on the lessons that I have learned from each of them and I recognize that even though I cannot see them or call them, they are still very much alive to me. Today's scripture is a sort section of a part of a letter that was written to an early church in the context, in the context of All Saints Day. I want to draw your attention to the last line in today's reading. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. 
we hear the word of God from others. It is taught to us and shown to us and all the myriad of things that we are willing to do for one another. We learn what being Christian looks like and feels like and is done like by all of those Christians who came before us. And then we let those works shape us as co-believers and mold us in the ways that we treat the other and care for others. And then when we leave this plane for the next, the people that we cared for and shaped and molded by, we, they bring our faith to the next generation. Paul, Timothy, and Silas, who penned this letter, heard about Jesus' miraculous words and deeds from others. And they take on those lessons, and we see them here describing how those lessons have shaped their treatment of this community how they too have become humble servant leaders. And then we hear them giving thanks because they see that the words that they have shared are alive and well within the community. There's a story that's told about me that when my great grandmother Patricia died, I questioned why everyone was sad. And weren't they happy that she was in heaven? In our culture, we often hide grief and we don't celebrate or commune with the dead the way they do in Mexico and Central America. We don't picnic at the cemeteries. We often don't even speak of the one who's passed because we fear it will bring up feelings of loss and sadness. And it might. But we believe that Jesus conquered death and those who aren't with us are still very much alive. And so liturgically, we take out these few days in November to remember their witness and to celebrate their new life. Frances Bellerby, many think, wrote the poem I opened with about taking a fall walk with her brother who had died in World War I. We can still walk, talk, and celebrate with those who went before. And when we acknowledge and pass on our memories of them, they never pass out of our hearts. I hope someday we can transform our culture so that we too can celebrate the great saints we loved and not be afraid to speak about our grief. But until that time, may we each bring to mind during these days all those wonderful people who shared with us the good news of God in words, in actions, and deeds, and let us do likewise with all of those around us. Amen. Let us pray. Holy being who called all of us into life, from the first Adam and Eve to the babies born around the world this morning, you have labored and we have been born. Holy is your name in all of the earth. We thank you this day for all who have shown us your way. Abraham and Sarah heard your call and ventured to new places, even when they are old. We listen for your call today. Miriam and Moses danced and led your people from suffering towards a new promise. We await a vision of your burning fire today. Deborah fought, Samuel prayed, and they led in different ways. We are preparing to lead this day. David and Bathsheba sinned but were forgiven, and we confess our sin and we long for your grace today. Amos spoke, and Esther stood tall for the sake of justice. We open ourselves to your strength today. Mother Mary and Brother Jesus accepted your call. We attend to your word this day. Peter and Paul, Magdalene and Lydia, and the saints through all the ages have picked up their cross, and we pray that we might faithfully follow them today. Holy Being, who called us into life through the saints in our lives, be born anew to us, that we might serve all your saints, the hungry and the thirsty, the sick and the imprisoned, the naked and forgotten, to honor to your holy name in all of the earth. Amen. Amen.